system of linear equations is shown below where b is a real number. All right, so if you notice here, we have two equations, right? Each of them have two variables, but what you'll notice on the second one over here is that there is no number for b. That's something that we have to find. Um, and the question is, what values could b be for this system to have no solutions? Now, there's no graphs or anything like that, but if you remember um, what characteristics would happen if there are no solutions. Well, if we were to sketch a graph, I'm just I'm just gonna sketch one here. Okay, I've got oh okay, let's go back there. That's not what was supposed to happen. So if we were to sketch a graph, okay, that could possibly look like this right here. Right? And you have to think to yourself, what does it mean to have no solutions? Right? If we draw a graph like that, that would mean that there's one solution. Okay. If they have no solutions, that means that they will never intersect each other. All right, and so these would then be parallel lines. And if, you, if you've watched the other videos, then you would know uh, that parallel lines, they would have the same slope, okay? Which means that to get from one point to this point, we would go up uh, by the same amount and right by the same amount. Same thing here, right? So we'd go up and right by the same amount. Every single time we'd be going up and right by the same amount. And that's why they would never meet because it would go, the change is exactly the same, you know? Um, and it would have different y-intercepts. So since slope-intercept form is something that we're used to seeing all the time, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just rewrite this in slope-intercept form. I'll do it first like that, and then we'll go into something else a little bit different. So to get this into y equals mx plus b form, we are going to keep the y by itself. So we're gonna keep this. Like this piece right here, we are not moving. Okay, so then that means that if we want to keep this side here, we'll move the 2x over to the opposite side. All right, and then these will cancel out. Okay, 2x's minus 2x's is got no x's. This comes straight down, so it becomes 3y is equal to, now here remember, um, unless this had an x, like if it had an x there, then you could combine. But since it doesn't have an x, we're going to just do negative 2x plus 9. And finally, we're going to divide each term by 3, and that's going to get the y by itself. So this becomes y equals negative 2 over 3. Well, this cannot be reduced, so we're going to keep it like this, plus, and then 9 divided by 3 is 3. So this is what the slope-intercept form of the y equals mx plus b is for this equation. Then for the other one, uh, we have 4x plus b y equals 18. Now, don't worry about that right now. Just focus on what we normally do. Let's get the y by itself, right? So we're just we're not touching this. We're going to subtract 4x on both sides. And then down comes this b y is equal to negative 4x plus 18. All right, now if we divided everything um, from here, I think it would be a little bit complicated, so I um, probably don't think I'm going to do that. Uh, we have to think to ourselves, well, actually, you know what? Let's, let's go ahead and do it. Let's do it. All right. So we're going to have y equals negative 4 over b. I know that looks super confusing. Okay. Plus 18 over b. I totally get this looks really confusing right now. Now, um, all you need to know, just remember, okay, think about what you do know. You do know no solutions means that there's parallel lines, okay? If the parallel lines, the main thing about parallel lines is that they have to have the same slope. That is the most important thing, all right? So let's compare the slope here with the slope here. So if I were to write negative 2 over 3, that's this slope, how does it compare to negative 4 over b, right? And at first glance, you're, you're probably looking at this and you're saying there's no comparison. But there is if you think about it a little differently, okay? How do you get from negative 2 to negative 4, okay? And, and we're not adding, we're just going to just go by multiplication. Well, if you multiply by 2, negative 2 times negative 4 would give you, I'm sorry, negative 2 times 2 gives you negative 4. So since everything's equal in math, we'd also multiply this by 2. So 3 times 2 would give us 6, 
making it that b has to equal to 6. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back over here. Okay, I'm going to actually, I'm not going to erase that because I want to keep that there. I'm going to rewrite this, make this a little bit easier. Let's rewrite this, uh, let's rewrite it right here. Okay, I'm going to rewrite the second equation. So 4x, okay, that, that's this one right here. I'm going to rewrite this. But instead of writing b, I'm going to replace it with 6 and keep everything else the same, right? So the only thing that changed was that this, this b that was here, I'm going to make it a 6. And if we get this into slope intercept form, we subtract 4x on both sides. We get that 6y is equal to negative 4x plus 18. If we divide everything by 6, okay, we get, follow my arrow here, we get y is equal to negative 4 over 6x plus 18 divided by 6 is 3. And if we were to simplify, as we always should, y is equal to negative 2 over 3x plus 3. Okay, and you'll see that this, this y equals mx plus b form, right? Remember that this is the second equation. The slope is exactly the same as the one in the first equation. So that's how you know that these guys would be parallel, right? And so I know that was a little bit more complicated. It's a, it's a different way of thinking. Um, but if you follow what you know, you can figure it out.